and Amanda here. Uh, before we start, there's going to be a little bit of glare because we're talking about transparencies today. So these are Tim Holtz ones. Absolutely love them. Um, these are quite thin. Um, the alternative I'm going to use today is a little bit thicker just because that's what I've got. But you can buy transparency film on um, Amazon. Okay, go and have a look. Um, it's not the cheapest of things. But if you can also get printable, so you can totally make these yourself and use your digital prints. But I'm going to show you today how you can make them yourself without printing. Okay, with just a few um, crafty supplies that you may well already have. And the idea of these is they're great for layering, use them as they are, or you can layer them over things and it just adds interest. So I'm going to show you how we can make them ourselves. And then I'm going to show you a couple of ways to use them. So let's get cracking. Okay, so I'm using acetate. So this is your bog standard crafty acetate that you can buy cheapest chips. And I have previously done a full 12 by 12, like a collage, like a masterboard, and then cut it up. For the purpose of the video, I'm just going to do a 6 by 6 So here's my acetate. Sorry about the glare. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it. And then what you want to do is get out your stamps, okay, get out your stamps and have a look if you've got some that you can colour. So, for example, I have the butterflies, okay, these are a variety of brands, that's Tim Holtz, these are El Cheapo off of Amazon, you can use anything, okay, just make sure they stamp nicely. And what you need to stamp on acetate is stays on okay so this is a solvent based ink and it will stamp on anything it's got a very fast drying time you cannot use archival ink on acetate it will just wipe off okay what you can also do is you can um, stamp with clear embossing ink and then use an embossing powder with acetate and if you use a proper heat gun it will not melt it just keep it moving. So that's another way that you can do this technique. But I'm just going to do the quick method with the stays on ink. Now, it's a solvent-based ink. Some people don't like the smell of it. And some people say it ruins your stamps. I would say, I'm not going to disagree with them. But I have used stays on for years and years and years and years on my stamps. And it's never done them any harm. So it's up to you. At the end of the day... How much use do we get out of stamps to be ruining them anyway? <laughs> we don't use them as much as we should. So what you want to do is decide on what stamps you're going to use. I think I quite like this one. So I am look at, I do have quite a large selection of stamping blocks. Um, you can use your, you know, your stamping platform. If you don't have large blocks, you can attach stamps to DVD cases, stamp cases, um, CD cases, and that will give you a large surface. Okay. So then we want to ink all over. Now the stays on is quite a dark colour. So if you want a dark colour, stamp straight away. If you want a more softer, vintage look, okay, then I advise that you stamp off. Stamping off just means that before we stamp our item, we stamp it on a scrap piece of paper to get some of the ink off so that we get a lighter stamp, okay? And I'm just going to start stamping and I'm going to stamp here. Now, when I did my 12 by 12 ones, I used a lot more stamps and put a lot more detail. You can use as many or as little stamps as you like and make your collar just fab as you like, okay? I'm doing a quick version for you today and see how that's stamped on there perfectly fine. So then I'm going to have a look and I want to do something that I can colour. So I'm going to use the Tim Holtz butterfly and I'll show you when I finish collaging how you can colour them. Okay, so here I think I might just do it right at the side there. I'll go up here a bit. Okay. You've just got to, once you commit, try not to move it so you're not smudging it and press firm like, I didn't stamp off. Never mind. I didn't stamp off, so that one's going to be a bit uh, bright. I, you should have stamped off. I forgot. <laughs> I blinked and I forgot. Then, you know, I'll go in with some smaller stamps and fill in the gaps. 
so this is just a little number one okay so we'll have a number there oops and a number here i will say you've got more chance of the stamp slipping if it is a photopolymer or you know um silicon rather than the red rubber they're less likely to slip but you know if you're just gentle and you're careful you shouldn't have a problem okay and then what we can do is we can uh, we'll do this one which is another butterfly and i'll show you stamp i'll remember to do this one stamped off i'm just going to ink it all make sure i've got all that detail make sure you're stamping on a flat surface so that's stamped off so now i'm just gonna do it here i'm gonna stamp right over the top of what's ever the, whatever's there and you're getting like a collage effect so you'll see that one's slightly more muted than that one so it depends what look you're going for what i'd say is have a play you'll get different different looks depending on how you do it right let's use this one where's mint gone it's there Okay, I'm just going to speed the uh, video up for uh, a few moments and we're just going to carry on collaging until all of our space is full of yummy images. And that, just have fun with it. Uh, like I said, as many stamps, different stamps or as few as you like. Okay, so there we go. We've got our collaged piece of acetate. Okay, uh, if I just tilt it out of the glare. All right, so... And, you know, if you stamp on a background like this, uh, you know, you could cut it up when you've done and make a, a collage or tags out of that as well. Um, so give it a wave. Test on the last bit that you did with your hand. And if you look, just checking. So I'm not making myself out to be a liar. Okay. So I'm just going to turn it over. I'm just going to push it on my background there. Just to make sure all of that ink is, yes, it's not imprinting. So that's dry now, completely dry. So to add a bit of interest, we can add colour to this, okay? So what you do there is you want to use some alcohol markers, okay? Now I've got stamping blends. These are alcohol markers. You can leave it plain. You don't have to colour it. And I've also got these that I've dug out of the darkest depths of my crafty hard so what you want to do is you want to turn your transparency or acetate over and then have a look what colors you like let's have a look at this color that's a nice color and what you do is you just on the back of the butterflies color the whole butterfly color the whole butterfly in so just follow the outline color the whole entire thing okay this is not going to react with your ink because you're doing it on the back Okay, and just stay within the, the lines of the butterfly. You know, if you're really good at colouring, you can go in and you can, you know, add extra touches of colour and shading and all. I'm not good at that. So I'm just doing it, I'm doing it basic. <laughs> I'm going basic. Right, so here I've got a blue one. So let's just colour over all of this. And it's just going to give a subtle colour. Okay. Just speeding this process up a little bit so you don't have to watch me colouring and trying to stay within the lines. So like I say, um, if you are confident with colouring, you can try and add different colours for tones, etc. I'm just using the one. It, it will still turn out absolutely fabulous. So anybody can do this. You don't need to be um, fantastic with your alcohol markers. Just have some fun. So there we go. So we've coloured on the back. So then when you turn it over, you've got all of that detailed outline of the black with just the colour at the back. Um, so it's a really good way of doing it. That one's a bit naff with the pink. I thought it would be in clever blending. But you get the idea and you can have a play and you can experiment. Let's see if we can blend that one out with a different pen. There we go. Can blend it back out because if you put the alcohol pen back on, it'll it'll react. Okay. So we can get that one a bit of a better colour. 
just change that up a bit okay you get the idea don't you okay there we go that's a bit of a nicer color i'm happy with that so you know just make sure your alcohol inks have, have dried it shouldn't take very long you can have them as pale or as dark as you like and there you go you can see if the um, light's not shining too bright and then obviously you can layer them over um, images you can layer them over plain you can layer them over music paper or whatever you like so let's uh, quickly make one let's have a look what we can do so couple of ideas so here's one i also did yesterday um you know with my script on and you can and here's another one that i've already cut out that goes up that can go on there okay so here we go we'll use this one and then we'll do that one so you can just put it on your tag cut it to the same size mine are generally three by six and then you can just snip your edges the same as your tag okay you can punch your hole punch your hole And then you can tie them together and what i'd do is i'd probably tie them with string you know so that this one can move so it's got movement in it and let's just put a quick hole in that aiming for the middle so you can either you know you could sew around there and it just adds it's interesting it's a different texture if you add string then they can move about okay you get the gist Let's get some of this quickly and then I'll show you another idea and I'll show you how I've added one to another project. I'll give you a couple of ideas how to use it. So that's the most basic idea is to literally just use it as a layer over something to add interest. You can make pockets out of um, acetate. Uh, if you want to stick it down to a page, I suggest you use red line tape. Right, so let's have a look at some other some other ideas. What else can we do? So I got one of the film strips. So this is a die and it comes solid like that. Okay, so you can just cut a small piece okay, and add it in and put some interesting paper behind. Or what I did was I closed it, drew around it and then cut it out with scissors so that I've got a full window. And then what you can do is you can home in on what you want to display, okay? And then trim that bit off. Let me just get it kind of straight. Yeah, so I want some of the butterflies and some of, there we go, I love it like that, that looks nice. Some of the butterflies. Just make a little nut notch there and a little notch there okay and then you just cut out the bit that you want okay this would look great on a journal cover if you did one of these and took some time over it there's loads you can do okay and then you can very carefully with some glue less is more when it comes to acetate Okay, glue all the way around. And here, I'd glue the card rather than the acetate. Okay. Then get your acetate and arrange it where you want it. See if you need to snip any off, which I do. I'm just going to just take it back off a minute and just snip a bit off that okay arrange it where you want it close that move it over a little bit i need to snip a bit more off okay and then you can close that up you can add your brads or your eyelets and you've got like a film slide okay really really easy to do all you're doing is stamping and a bit of coloring and how cool does that look okay loads of uses for it embellishments dangles whatever okay 
I've done mine really quickly. If you take a bit more time, you can stamp on there. You could put words on. You could do what you want. So we've got a film strip. We've got a layered tag. And then I did take some circles. Okay, I used some scrapbooking paper that had interesting pattern on. Or you can do plain. I ran it through my embossing folder with a script. And then I'm going to punch out... Um, what size did I use? Let me try and remember what size I used. Two and a quarter. So now punching acetate can be challenging. I'm not going to lie, but we're going to have a go. So if I go for those two butterflies there, try and get it in the centre. Oh, it's easier to die cut them. <laughs> but it does work with good quality punches. Mine are stamping up punches, so they are very good quality. And again... You put your glue around on the card or paper. Okay. And then add your circle. Give it a tap so that it stays in place. And then put your other one on top. Which way is that script going? I don't suppose it matters. And then put your other one on top. Okay, have a play, see what you've got in your collection. Okay, I could have done with that being moved down a bit further, but you get the idea. And then when that's all dry, then you can punch a hole in there, add some twine, and you've got a, like a photo slide. Or almost like an optician slide, isn't it? What they put in and out of your glasses. So I just thought those were cool ideas. I'm sure you can think of lots of other ideas. So these have been done really quickly for the you know for the video just just to give you some ideas so here's one that i took some time over okay and i added just a strip of it to a tag just a strip to a printed tag just a tiny strip and then that adds interest and then when it's in there it's adding extra just fantasticness to your projects Another really good idea is for the acetate is when you've done your stamping and your collaging, have a look if you've got any, um, what do you call it? What's the word? Stickers. You know the washi tape stickers, the floral ones and things like that. They, they would look really cool layered over as well because they're um, opaque as well. So there's the idea of how we can make our own transparency film okay and color it and several ways for you to try and use it i hope that's helpful these will be going in my big book of ephemera so thanks for watching take care and i'll see you soon bye for now